You know, over the last few weeks, I've been speaking about something that I think is really important. And it's so indicative of how essential it is that people grow and change inside themselves. What I've been speaking about, and I'll repeat it because I think it's something that I need to take deeper and I suspect most of you need to take deeper. And that's this whole, you know, concept of the energy of spirit, the energy of a higher nature is neither an energy of positive or negative. It's not an energy of polarity. It's not an energy of conflict. It's just energy. And it flows into us as Shakti, which is supposed to nurture and develop our chakra system inside. And the way it manifests in our life, in our interactions with other people, in everything we do is totally dependent upon the amount of work we have done on ourselves. So that energy comes into us in a very pure state. If our hearts are open, if we're balanced inside, if our minds are quiet, throat is open, understand it manifests in the world as compassion, as love, as knowledge, as wisdom, but if there's all this confusion running rampant inside people, that's how it manifests in life. And basically, when you look out at the world and see what goes on in the world, it's simply a manifestation of the lack of inner work that people do on themselves. You know, the energy of spirit, which is pure, which is, you know, without polarity, without conflict, without right or wrong, or positive or negative comes into us. And the way it manifests in our lives is totally dependent on how highly developed our systems are inside. So the work of this meditation or any other form of inner work that helps people develop a chakra system, you know, is essential because it really makes us, makes it possible for us to function here as human beings on the highest level possible. And people complain, they bitch, they this, they that. It's all about how terrible life is. It's not how terrible life is. It's like, you know, I saw this documentary the other day about George Collin, who's a very funny guy, who, you know, who is a comedian and, but very smart. And he's talking, and he's talking about in his gruff kind of <laughs> voice that he told, you know, that they talk about saving the planet, you know, and he said, the planet doesn't need to be saved. The planet will exist beyond all of human craziness. It will continue to go on and develop, you know, what needs to be saved are human beings. Human beings need to learn to develop inside themselves the ability to live here with love, with compassion, you know, and that won't save the planet, it'll save humanity and create a much better place for us all to live. I mean, I was blown away when he said that because it absolutely is in, you know, it just is in line with everything I talk about that it's not, you know, uh, us, saving the external world is never going to be done. It's us truly working on ourselves so that we can transmit spirit, higher energy, you know, with openness, with an open heart, with a quiet mind. We can transmit knowledge to the world, wisdom to the world, love to the world, compassion to the world, you know, and and simply because we have done the work inside ourselves to open. And I think that this is a very serious problem where everybody's trying to save the planet and nobody goes, very few people give a, do a damn thing about themselves, fixing themselves. And it's easy to recognize Negativity, it's right on the surface of life. What's really difficult to do is to recognize that what we see is a manifestation of exactly what exists inside us. 
all the wars, the tensions, the conflicts we have with other people just manifest in the world. And, you know, when I realized this is such a profound realization for me, spirit is without conflict. The energy of creation is without conflict. The energy of creation, the Shakti, the Om sound, it's pure. And it comes into each and every human being and enables, sustains their life, makes it possible for them to have their life, but it manifests in the world according to how open people are. It's the same way with art, with music, with all the cultural stuff that goes on. We're just being able to have compassion for other people and love for other people. And doing one service in the world. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, I hope you all begin to realize this or take this deeper into yourselves because we live in a shitty world. I mean, it's just insane what goes on today. Every time you look in the media, you know, 19 children are slaughtered in Texas. I mean, it's unbelievable the kind of madness that goes on in the world. How does it get fixed? I mean, I'm not sure it'll ever be fixed, but each and every human being can do the one thing that is possible to do, and that's to fix themselves. Get to a place where that energy flows through them and manifests as love, as compassion. As wisdom, as knowledge. And then we don't blame the world because we're totally responsible for taking upon ourselves, you know, the work that is essential to transform all of the craziness inside, the emotions, the mind, the sexual energy, all that energy that runs rampant inside people and transform it into love, into balance, into harmony, into knowledge, into wisdom, I mean, what a beautiful place this world would be if people would take the time to do that. These classes are all about doing that. These classes are not about me saving the world. These classes are about trying to transmit Shakti and energy that can help every person that attends them to transform the negativity in themselves into something full of joy and love. None of us are victims. <laughs> we recognize that this amazing thing we're given called life is our teacher. Does anyone have a question? They would like to ask. I have a question, Stuart. <clears throat> the work that we did in Asia was very difficult and very, uh, it changed me for sure. And I know it was a wonderful thing to do, but um, I have found it hard for a long time to forgive traffickers of children I'm um, working towards that, but do you have anything to tell me about that? Yes, the work that you did and I did with the Bahini Foundation made both you and I grow. It yeah. was a period in yeah. both our lives that demanded enormously of out of it came my book, Little Sisters, which was a chore. I took 13 years to write that book. You know, out of it came this amazing 
you know, Christina Jones, who did this unbelievable work in the fall. That was a period in both our lives. We have to build on that. Oh. You know, you understand? And look, you know, yeah, I mean, look, human trafficking is one of the simply most horrible things that goes on in the planet. Yeah. You know, and I don't know what to do about it, Chris. When I, we ran that Little Sisters Foundation, you know, I, all I saw was people, they just kept getting worse. Yeah. Kept getting worse. So I said, no, that we have to do something to develop. I, you know, I really learned from that, Stuart, what you do in your meditation classes was, was singularly more important because it was helping to save the lives of individual people. And I couldn't do that working in a sociological capacity. And I discovered that most of the people involved in that world, you know, it, there was so much ego, there was so much position and power and people that I said, no, this is never gonna work. It was more important for me to embrace and nurture individual human beings and help them find their life. You know, and if out of that, people in that world of trafficking want to come study here, they're welcome. Yeah. I'm not going to turn them down. I mean, we didn't turn them down in Nepal. I'm not going to turn them down here, you know. But again, how many, you know, to get people to do something of a spiritual nature is a very difficult thing. And as far as what forgiving, what choice do we have, Chris? Yeah. What no. If you don't forgive, you know, you carry that grudge for the rest of your life. Right. And I'm not saying human trafficking is some kind of great endeavor that, you know, it's terrible. It's horrible. We confronted it head on. And boy, what an experience. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah. I mean, you went into brothels in Mumbai on Falkland Road. I mean, there is probably no place worse hell on the world than Falkland Road. There is. You had the courage to go there and to find out what is really going on. I mean, my God, you know, your growth, having gone through that, was total. Was amazing to me. And don't let it be something that just falls away. Build on that growth. Thank you. Thank you with all my heart. Thank you. Oh, Chris, I love you. I'll never, you know, it was just the most extraordinary experience. The Heaney and Little Sisters Foundation and that book I wrote, Little Sisters. I mean, to go through that and to see that and the hell, yeah. it means that there's nothing I can ever complain about for the rest of my life. When I see what pe other people, man's inhumanity to man, yeah. Wordsworth, you know, when I see saw it so clearly, I can never complain about anything. No problem I could have could ever surmount the problems I saw in those children and those people. That's right. And why? My God, you can all right, comma, this, that. It's all bullshit, you know? It's just greed and people not, you know, having no capacity to work on themselves and live with closed hearts. And all they see is money, 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 money. And if they make slaves out of people to make money, you know, they don't care. There's nothing open in those people. And they are also an education for us. That's true. Us, that we need to get open. Otherwise, these are the alternatives that go on in the world. And just think how many people had a chance in their life to go through what you went through in Nepal, Chris. Yeah, it's a great, now, great blessing, a great blessing. You know, most people, they sit on their ass and they stare and have meditation. And you went there, you had the guts to go there and do what you did. I remember you called me up. I love this place, it's very exotic. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then the next day you went to that meeting at the United Nations. Yeah. 
And out of that, the Vahini Foundation started, you know? But you had the guts to do it. Did I, or, for the rest of my life, I will respect that. That came from our work. Of course it came from the work, and you never forgot that, you know? There were people there with you that forgot that. Yes. You know? But forgive. If you don't forgive, you don't move on. <laughs> forgive the traffickers. Forgive all of that crap, you know? Because if you don't, you don't move on in life. Thank you. You put my heart at ease. Thank you. I mean, that was probably one of the most amazing experiences of my life, Chris. I mean, it drew out of me that book. Well, I had to write that book. Yeah. I originally wrote it as a screenplay because I said the whole fucking world has to know about this. Yeah. You know, and I had an agent in Hollywood who was trying to, everybody turned it down, you know? So the whole world has to know about this. This is insane. And we used to hear shit like, well, what do we care? This is in Nepal. Remember, we used to hear stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. It's extraordinary the lack of humanity in people. Only because they are so freaking closed inside themselves. They can't see two inches in front of their nose. Somebody with brown skin is not a human being. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Chris, God bless you for what you did. I'm telling you, you know, there's always a place in my heart for you. <clears throat> Thank you, Stuart. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I remember with my agent when we published Little Sisters, we went to all these people in Hollywood. The freaking thing would have made a, you know, an Academy Award movie, for God's sake. Oh, no, nobody was, you know, it was yeah. one after the other, from Brad Pitt on down, you know, it was turned down. I couldn't believe it, you know, I said, what do these people want, you know? They call these idiotic movies. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, then we'll have a... Whoa, <laughs> quite a class. We'll have a meditation class on Sunday. God bless you all. And understand the simplicity of this work we do and the, the energy of God is not an energy of conflict. It's an energy of love and it's an energy of purity, and we need to be pure inside in order to receive it. So that it manifests in our life that way. And then there's forgiveness, because you got to forgive. If you don't forgive, you're stuck. You know? Okay, thank you. God bless you all. And I'm looking forward to seeing everyone on Sunday.